Tesla vehicles can do some pretty amazing things. They're all electric vehicles. They can be charged at home. They are some of the most powerfully accelerating vehicles. And to a limited extent, they can even drive themselves. But can they, as Elon Musk said in the recent Starship presentation, actually drive themselves on Mars? Well, let's get down to the bottom of this. Teslas will work on Mars, you know. The, if you can either, a, you can just drive them pretty much. Because um, electric cars don't need uh, oxygen, they don't need air. Uh, so you can just drive them around, no problem. At first glance, the plan seems like a perfectly reasonable one. After all, Teslas are all electric vehicles. They have no tailpipe, they're charged via an electric charging port that you can find right here. And as a whole, they're really a possibility because they don't depend on gasoline they have the ability to run on Mars. And I have no doubt that a Tesla vehicle, if taken to Mars, would be able to survive a, at least a brief period of time on the surface. Although I'm a little bit concerned about the long-term effects of how well they would actually work. The frame of a Tesla would work pretty well in the vacuum of Mars. It would hold up pretty well and should be quite usable. The Windows would hold up, although you might not exactly need a window when you're driving around on Mars. There may or may not be. The windshield will probably still be useful as a deflection like they had on the lunar rovers. But a lot of things really aren't necessary. For instance, the aerodynamic shape that a Tesla has, that's really, really useful when you are driving on Earth because it makes much better gas mileage. It's not needed at all on Mars because Mars just doesn't have an atmosphere to speak of. Who cares if you can get a fraction of a percent more in performance? It's just not worth it. Now, the fact that you can mass manufacture may make it so it's worth it, but in all likelihood, you would want to have something radically different than what we have. Maybe something closer to the Tesla pickup truck will work? We'll find out. One of the biggest issues actually comes in the drivetrain. See, the electric motors will work just fine, but the tires here, they won't work as well as you would think. When the tires that have been sent to other planets on the various rovers that have gone places, all were made out of metal and didn't have any kind of atmospheric pressure. Now, if you took this tire into space, it would actually hold up pretty well if you deflate it a little bit. The pressure that's in these is about 45 PSI, which is roughly three times the atmospheric pressure. So if you deflate it a little bit and then pumped it into a vacuum, it would actually hold up just fine but you still want to replace it with some kind of a metal that will be a little bit more robust. But the biggest issue actually comes from the axle. You see, the axle has some kind of a lubrication to allow it to work well, and if you're going to do this on Mars, you have to have something that will hold up to the cold, to the more radiation intense, and the low vacuum pressure, as well as the dust environment there. Now, the rovers that have been sent to Mars have a special lubricant that's made just for that very purpose. Tanya of Mars, who I've communicated with over social media, indicated very much that the Curiosity rover had to have a very, very special lubricant. And that's just not something you're going to find right off the shelf. Could they do it with this change in lubricant? Well, probably. But as it is, you'd probably take this thing out for a spin and it would probably really, really seriously degrade the lifetime. And it may not go further than a couple of miles, which is certainly not what you want to have for a vehicle going to another planet. One of the things to be concerned about is the interior. You see, there's a lot of stuff here that really wouldn't do very well in a vacuum. Anywhere from the siding in here to the chair that I'm sitting on to just about everything on the inside. If you were going to take this thing to Mars, you'd really want to gut it. Also, if you don't plan on making some major changes like making it airtight, then you really have to worry about having a spacesuit in here. And quite frankly, there's not really enough room for spacesuits. Spacesuits are bulky, especially when they're inflated. I mean, just look at how little room I have in the steering wheel. Now granted, I'm a pretty tall guy, but if you're going to take a Tesla to Mars, you'd really want to make sure that you do everything right and take a look at what is actually needed on the interior. Now granted, they would probably take a Model X. If you're gonna take it to Mars, you may as well get the more expensive one, which will have a little bit more room, but still, something to be concerned about. One of the things that people don't realize about electric vehicles is they do still need to be cooled. Now, 
you don't have an explosive reaction like you do with gasoline that creates a lot of waste heat. So you don't need a giant radiator like most of them do. But you still do need some. The batteries particularly need to be cooled so when they're being charged, especially when they're being charged really, really fast, they can maintain their proper temperature. You still have AC and other things like that to worry about. So you actually do have a radiator. It's much, much smaller than most vehicles, and it's a little less conspicuous, but it's still there. Now, for an electric vehicle on Mars, you would have to maintain the temperature in another way. You couldn't just use the air because the air pressure is quite a bit lower. One of the biggest problems would be the clearance. You see, a Tesla is built very, very low to the ground. The reason that they do this is so that it can get optimal aerodynamic performance. It works really good when you're on concrete. When you're driving off concrete, though, it works less well. And quite frankly, there's no concrete on Mars at all. So the clearance here is pretty minimal. I don't think I could even fit my head underneath the vehicle when it's just here on the ground. Rocks that are on Mars are quite a bit bigger. Typically, the Mars rovers that are there are set to drive on things that are about this high it's not going to work very well you have to be about a half meter clearance now the way that many of the mars vehicles get around this is they have the ability to independently raise each one of their wheels up so that they can drive over a surface it's a really neat technique you would want to do something like this with a tesla if you're going to be able to drive it on mars in a reasonable fashion but a stock tesla just wouldn't work as is in the end, I think it's a really interesting idea to take a Tesla to Mars. I don't think it's something that's really realistic in the current form, but I think it is something that's entirely possible. If you just took the chassis here of the Model 3 and built a rover on top of it and changed out some of the lubricant and a few other little things like that, you could probably have a pretty decent vehicle that would work well on Mars. Tesla's got a decent start to this, but quite frankly, it's really not in the mass production type of realm. It's really a one-off type of thing, or, you know, a few dozen maybe. And it's going to take some of that kind of dedicated engineering, which they don't really have. Now, I bet you they will work with SpaceX, and I bet you in the end we will have something. But it's not something that's just going to be off the shelf. It's not as easy as just taking a Tesla that exists today and bringing it to Mars. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. If you want to talk about space stuff all week long, go ahead and join my Discord and you can help me with that, some of these videos here. And thank you to my Patreons and other supporters. You guys are awesome. Till next time, keep on tracking. Take care.